baby. Whoops. <laughs> I'm banging things around. Hi, it's Karen from Mayfly Life. Today I'm going to be uh, starting off with um, something that uh, I discovered um, in my uh, research and so forth for foods that are lower in GI, uh, in the which is the GI index for diabetics. And or for, for anyone for that matter, it's not just diabetes. Um, because I'm a type two diabetic, I, um, I've been searching for foods that would, would help me um, uh, keep my blood sugars steady. So what I've discovered is like, I, I love cooking and uh, there are a lot of foods that I haven't been able to eat. It's been hit and miss, it's experimenting is more like it. So what I'm doing is I'm doing a recipe for a particular uh, dish um, that I discovered uh, several months well several months ago, and uh, I've made uh, on a few occasions. And I do it in bulk, and it's uh, pork and beans, something that I couldn't have because it was really high in sugar. So what I do is I found a, a recipe for diabetics. I tried it, love it love it so does my husband and he loves pork and beans so what I'm gonna do is I gotta start the night before and prepare it um, and what I do is I've got a bag of uh, the north white beans great north white beans and what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to soak them overnight and get it ready for the crock pot for tomorrow morning so I'll show you how I do it. So as you can see, I've got a cup. This is one cup of the northern beans. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to soak them overnight so that I'm rehydrating them. And what I'm doing is I'm doing, uh, the recipe calls for two cups and I usually double it. So I got two cups there. But now I'm gonna I'm gonna add f uh, another two uh, and have them soaked overnight. Okay, so as you can see, the uh, beans have uh, have rehydrated, and now what I got to do is cook them, and they've actually doubled in size. Now <laughs> I accidentally called them uh, the navy bean or the great northern beans these are white kidney beans so you can use use white kidney beans actually for um uh for your um pork and beans it doesn't matter really as long as it's a medium to small bean um great north uh, beans are are the best that you can you can get or navy beans but uh my grocer didn't have them on hand and what i'm going to do now is i'm going to drain them so i'm just going to pour them into this colander and that's the result of four cups of beans. So I'll drain them well, and then I'm gonna take them and put them in my crock pot. Okay, so they're uh, slowly draining and uh, just gonna wait for a couple minutes and I'll get my other ingredients together to put in my crock pot. So what I've got here is uh, just a, you know, normal size crock pot. I've got my uh, my beans that have been rehydrated, and I'm putting them in my crock pot here. Now this is a double batch, so the normal um, normal recipe is two cups of dried beans, and what you're going to do is you're going to rehydrate them overnight, and it's going to double double in in size. So you can see how uh, how full this is. This is pretty much three quarters full, but it'll cook down once uh, once it all starts heating up. I've got the uh, beans in the crock pot. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take half a pound of sliced bacon, and it's just cut thin, as you can see, and uh, just place it in the pot. And I'll give that a stir in a second. And you want to add a diced onion. So what I do is. Uh, I don't like uh, putting lots of onion in because uh, actually hubby doesn't uh, pretty much care for onion but so I'm making this for both of us so what I'm just going to do is I'm going to chop half an onion uh, the recipe calls for uh, one full onion to the two cups of beans 
and uh, you know dice it up decent size. It doesn't have to be perfect, but I'm just dicing, you know, rough rough chop type size uh, onion, and then I'm going to add that. I'm going to add that to my pot as well. And next what I'm going to add is a couple of diced, finely chopped um, garlic cloves. Now, um, I'm, this is just uh, for my purposes, but I'll be providing uh, the recipe for you uh, in the description below. Okay, next I'm going to add a tin of no salt, no sugar added uh, diced tomatoes and it is nine, uh, 796 ml or 28 fluid ounces. And the recipe does call for only um, uh, 8 ounces uh, for, for every 2 pounds of beans, but I like it saucy. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to give this a bit of a mix so I get all the juices down below and mix in the bacon. And that bacon is going to give, give the beans that nice smoky, smoky flavor. I'm just going to love this. So next you add I add anyway is molasses. Now molasses I know is going to give you uh, uh, a little bit of the, the sweetness but it's not over overly used here so it's not it doesn't it hasn't affected my uh, my blood sugars so it it requires a little bit of uh, I don't add the whole amount, and the whole uh, what the uh, the amount is is uh, three tablespoons. But I probably add maybe maybe half of that. So just add that in, give it a bit of a punch down, and then go on to your next ingredient, which is um, maple syrup. But I don't use maple syrup. What I've been uh, using is. Uh, this particular brand, uh, E.D. Smith, uh, for, it's a diabetic uh, syrup uh, that is not sweetened with sugar. And it asks for a quarter of a cup, and I'm doing half a cup because I've doubled my recipe here. But uh, you can use uh, maple syrup if you want. You don't have to use the um, you don't have to use the sugar substitute. But I like to to limit the the sugar that goes into this recipe, so I've just changed up the uh, the type of uh, syrup I'm using, and this is specifically for diabetics. Then I'm going to add quarter cup, which will be another half cup because I'm doubled, of unsweetened orange juice. Now oranges are good for you know for diabetics, so so I've got half half a cup there. But like I said, these quantities are doubled. These uh, measurements are doubled, and I will be providing you with uh, the actual recipe for the two uh, two cups of uh, beans. So now that I've got that, I need sugar substitute, which I which I use stevia, and it calls for. Two tablespoons. That's one tablespoon. Two, three, and there's four. Now you can use stevia or you know sugar twin or whatever or whatever uh, sugar substitute you use. I like stevia. Because it's a more natural, uh, more natural sweetener. And I'll just give this a stir down. It's 
a very simple recipe. I mean, these are ingredients that uh, don't require you to um, go out and buy special uh, specialty uh, stores or anything like that. So, and now what I'm at, what it asks for is uh, I need a quarter teaspoon of dry mustard powder. But like I said, I have a double batch here, so in it goes. I'm also using a tablespoon of Worcestershire sauce. That's one. Two. Three. Four. Because this is a half teaspoon measuring spoon. And then I'm going to add a little bit. It, it calls for two teaspoons of salt, but because I'm uh, also uh, blood pressure, I have to watch out for. So, and Scott as well. So I'm just adding just half of that portion. This will cook down. You'll let it cook. I've got it in my crock pot and I'll let it cook for the whole day on high at first and then I'll turn it down like I'll turn it down um, probably two two hours before the end of uh, its cook time and I'll just cook it uh, cook it down on low so um, now you can see that you got quite the it makes quite the amount and what I do normally is I just freeze it uh, leave it in my freezer and take it out when I need to. It it keeps very well in the freezer. It also it doesn't turn to mush when you uh, put it on top of the stove on low or in your microwave. It it holds together very well. So that's how I preserve. So I'll portion it out and then uh, then put it into uh, containers uh, and place in my freezer. Um, I'm not sure if you can use this for. Uh, for freezing or for uh, preserving um, I would imagine you could you would just have to follow your canning uh, directions uh, for that if you're going to do it uh, uh, by using a pressure cooker or uh, um, or just uh, like the hot water baths that most people use okay so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the lid on it and let it cook on high for about six hours. Now it all too depends on your crock pot. High maybe too much because you, you've got a very big powerful uh, type crock pot then put it on low for the rest of the, for the whole day. Just let it go and uh, like slow is is good. So let it go and uh, let it cook all day and I'll tell you something these beans are great and I'll show you what they look like after they're done. Well, you can see that my pork and beans are now done. And every few hours what I would do is I would go and give it a bit of a stir to make sure everything was uh, not sticking to the sides and everything else. As you can tell, I've changed. <laughs> I've had to change to my larger crock pot. So that's, that's about the size of it. So it's Mother's Day. This is part of my uh, Mother's Day meal and getting ready for barbecue season and this is a great way to start so you can use it in chili in whatever kind of recipe you need that requires pork and beans and they're great to have so i'm having this and my daughter's brought her homemade mac and cheese what a great mother's day to spend with family thanks for watching catch in the next one